Guess what? We got ourselves another lead on the potential whereabouts of Susan Powell. And she's rolled up in a blue carpet and she's in a drainage ditch. The best way to look at this is we're just keeping an open mind. Okay, so we are currently in the uh, culvert that goes underneath the interstate here. Fingers crossed. We'll see. You guys remember we spent a lot of time digging in a mine uh, a couple months back looking for her. We searched a dry canal up in Idaho with uh, cadaver dogs looking for her. And now we had an individual reach out to Susan's family who then reached out to us, a guy from Tennessee who works with a, kind of a collective network of paranormal researchers. They reached out and said that they believe they know where she's at. I don't know how the process works. I don't fully understand how they do what they do. Um, and I'm not necessarily even saying that what they do is, is correct, but we've committed to the Cox family to follow up on any potential leads. So as you can see, we have an old junky aluminum boat because we're gonna go drop this in a canal in basically like a very industrial part of Salt Lake City. It's out by the airport, right off the freeway, right on the route that Josh Powell could have taken when Susan went missing. Um, the canal's flowing pretty good right now. Uh, I checked it the other day and it's at least chest deep and pretty wide where normally there's not that much water in there. Um, so we're getting ready to go pick up this uh, Scott guy at the airport. He flew in from Tennessee. He's the one who's kind of put this whole effort together as far as where the location could potentially be. And uh, we're gonna hear him out. We're gonna see why and how he thinks she is where she is and with that information we're gonna jump in the water i mean he's flying out here with a wetsuit flippers snorkel diving gear i also have all my gear to get in the water hunter's gonna get in the water we're all probably gonna end up in the water at some point today and uh it's basically a, a canal that goes underneath the freeway so from the culvert where it goes under the freeway to about 300 yards back is the area that we're gonna be searching. And uh, they believe that she's wrapped up in a piece of blue carpet, like a blue rug or something. So, like I said, don't know how much merit to give any of this information, but at the same time, this is our commitment to Susan and to the family to do everything we possibly can to exhaust any possible resource or lead to be able to find her. So, today could be just us goofing around, wading around in a dirty old canal or it could be something much, much bigger than that. So we gotta get to the airport because Scott's getting ready to land right now and uh, get out there. Shoes so holy that they'll actually probably let my entire foot out the front. What? Do I have pepperoni on my hat? You don't like pepperoni? I love pepperoni. I love pepperoni. I love pepperoni. Man, how can you not like pepperoni? You're welcome, Alan. Mmm. That's a good pepperoni. You're welcome, Alan. Florida mode engaged. Thanks a lot, Obama.
that's one of the first things Susan told me. Say she's less than 20 miles from her house. Um, and then we eventually nailed it down to here. Then she eventually learned that she's rolled up in a blue carpet and she can see a culvert and she's in a drainage ditch. So using that, I narrowed it down to the Kennecott and Tailing Pond 2 area. As you and I had talked, Dave, that there's only four culverts on A. Yeah. It's one of those four. Yeah. I mean, this is it right here on our left. Oh, sorry, it's right here where the cattails are. look at this is we're just keeping an open mind and um, you know this is uh, this is what he does all day every day he flew in from Tennessee specifically for this and is pretty passionate about the case obviously Scott is Eric and the rest of our media team nice. so uh, what we're gonna do now is get unloaded unload the, the canoe and a couple other things and this canal that you're seeing right here is the area that uh, we're gonna scour uh, there's a culvert right here that goes right underneath the freeway and so that's uh, that's that's a prime spot to dump a body, and uh, we're just gonna get in there and start looking. Quick access. Yeah. You know, yeah. Not bad. Yeah. It's good to see you. I'm glad you're getting my messages. Yeah. This one definitely caught us all kind of by surprise. Yeah. Me too. Uh, I was a bit surprised. He just, uh, I guess we kind of heard about 36 hours ago. That's about what I heard. I'm Debbie Caldwell. So nice to meet you. I'm Scott. Nice Scotty to meet you, Scott. Or... Ken Caldwell. Ken, nice Hi, to meet Scott. you. Hi. So here is the uh, here's the drawing I drew after Susan took me here. It's so May 26, 2013. So what happened was I saw this story on Fox, and when I first discovered, I had this weird gift thing, and like the headline, like hovered above the page and I like knew I needed to pay attention to it. I could see the culvert. So I think right about where that starts to make that turn is about the perfect spot. That's where I'm going to start. Start there and then yeah. work, work And I know it can't be past the end of that turn because I can't see the culvert from there. We know on the night that she went missing that there was a winter storm warning that night which would have caused there to be less traffic possibly on I-80. Right. <sighs> Fingers crossed. We'll see. You want to just go down and just float this way a little bit and just check it out? Paddle out that way, kind of check the depths. Okay. I just checked it right here and it's about neck deep. So okay. Put a little shove off here. All right. Your eye like a big pizza pie. Some more. There we go. Hey, Alan. Hello. I got special little booties on. So I was going to ask you, let's get a Let's, uh. Machete in the back seat. I think we're going to go ahead back this way a little bit, Alan. Okay. Machete well, in the back seat. We'll take a look at the culvert. I wonder how much. Yeah, I was going to kind of get a little closer yep. to the view. Oh, no, sorry. I was thinking of just jumping out right here. Yeah. This side's deeper. A little deeper here. Yeah, this side's about probably three and a half, four feet deep. So, Let's go over to the uh, shallow side, yeah, then walk then in. Jumping in. Yeah. Is that the shallow spot? Everybody good? Everybody lean to the other side? Yeah. Oh yeah, we're sinking. <laughs> yeah. Like 
it's a lot squishy in some parts. Jeez. Yeah, some spots it goes down pretty deep. I hope I don't lose a shoe. Silty. I guess it's this point. I'll down to my knee. I'll just set this boat. I feel like a million dollars right now. Sports Illustrated. Yeah, no doubt, no doubt. If only I had started working out months ago. More solid than what you're saying. Yeah, that rake. Yeah, that rake. Where'd the rake go? It should be in the bottom of the. Nope. Alan. Jump yeah, in! Is All the right. rake floating right there? No, it's a metal rake. What happened to that? The metal one may have fallen in when we swapped out because it was in here. Yeah. Here we go. For the rake. Smells like eggs. Space, it's getting a little more narrow. When we first came in, we had about enough room for our necks. Now we're gonna be lucky to get out to our chins. There's fish bouncing around in here, big carp, mm -hmm. tons of spiders on the ceiling. Definitely uh, not an ideal spot to hang out, but it's another area that we can kind of say she's not here. Oh, it's watered up my mouth. Oh, it's nasty. No. <laughs> the flavor this, this week. There's some shallow right here. Check all these little rocks and blocks and things. Oh, there's a bunch of debris right there. And we are on the other side of the freeway. So now we're on the north side of the interstate. And uh, 
This is the drainage flow. I say we do a line down this way while we're yep. at it. We're here. So our strategy is basically kind of fanning out arms distance away from each other and walking a straight line. This side, there's much less silt and stuff so far. Yeah, make sure you stay hydrated. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> 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 oh, it's chunky. Oh, chunky it. style. <laughs> yeah. Mm. Nothing to wipe my mouth on. <laughs> oh, Al found a, a log. Huh. Yeah, and you did say about that they had changed the area, so yeah. I'm barefoot. You're barefoot? Yeah. Better sensitivity, you know. Yeah. Uh, I chased out there on carpet and then I felt it was just clay, so I was able to scratch with my toes. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Only Florida man. Yeah. Natural habitat. If this was Florida, we would have snapping turtles, water moccasins, alligators. So much bush. But yeah, with Utah, the only venomous snakes are rattlesnakes, which they don't like water. So, how the heck am I finding like rocks on top of the mud? <laughs> All right, let's stomp our way this okay. way. Long story short, there's two culverts. There was a bunch of construction that was done here about 10 years ago, which is uh, after Susan went missing, and we believe the culvert that we just came through was the new culvert that they installed back uh, back after Susan went missing. So now we're gonna search around it because that's the more likely spot because obviously that one didn't exist before. Squid or something. Okay. If there was a body in here, 13 years of this current would definitely tumble it to a certain point. Doubt we're gonna find anything right here in the middle of the channel. I'm just on a treadmill. There's no grit. That's pretty cool. Here, Hunter, come drag me. So we have a little technical difficulty over here with uh, Eric. He seems to have found a treadmill. <laughs> he's literally, <laughs> literally just. I'm walking right now. So yeah, he's he's wearing waders, which I don't. They're not doing him any good because they're full of water. And he also like full step. They, he didn't wear any boots, so it's just the slick neoprene bottom of the wader. So I think we're gonna have to tow him out of here. So this is gonna also, turn. I'm just wearing a bucket of water. All the water just <laughs> right. <crazy. laughs> Give me the other end of that rake. Oh, oh. Oh, We're losing him. We're losing him. Here's a tow rope here. Oh, that is cute though, watching you two hold hands like that. Look. So now we gotta try to find a way to cross the busy highway, which appears Kroger already did. I'm swimming and walking at the same time because of the current, but I don't think I make much of a headway. <laughs> oh, I'm so heavy with all this water. Oh my god. He's <laughs> like, like, like a balloon. <laughs> I can't get I can't get him. <laughs> <laughs> That's about half of it. I was so inflated. Right where we started, literally where we launched the boat, is where the start of the old culvert is. We didn't even know we were standing on top of it. We gotta do some digging right here. This is one spot that we did not search yet. Here we go. We're an hour and a half in, and said to look for a circle of birds and a shiny rock. The thing is, we've as far as I can tell, we have fully scanned here in the north side. 
there's one more culvert that way, so. I'd say we're about halfway done. And uh, we're gonna take the boat down the canal. We're gonna back our trucks up. It's about, like I said, like half a mile that way. So go jump in over there. That, that one, it, it wasn't as friendly as this one. I think it was a little bit more, like more harsh over there. So we'll see. Circling birds. This Yeah, we're at four hours, 58 minutes, and 15 seconds. I was close to four, five hours. Damn, Damn close. close. Yeah, I'm sorry. Yeah, listen, I get it, I get it, I get it. Uh, everything we can do, everything we can do, everything we can do, everything we can do on foot today. We've cleared every square inch of the entrance of both canal culverts. It would make sense for her to be thrown in right here, but not to stay here. Bodies tend to bloat when they're thrown in the water and then they sink back down, but with this current, it would have, it would have definitely moved her. We're also dealing with 13 years worth of silt that has been piling up in here. So silt, as the canal, you know, trickles on, it builds up this just layer of like basically quicksand. I don't think she's on the side of the road. I think if she got dumped here, which like I said, is a high probability that that's, that's a great place for them to have done it. She would have floated out towards the lake. Scott is, uh, is pretty dead set on this being the location. So he's over there still digging kind of through the muck and stuff. But I mean, you'd be, you could spend a month digging with a shovel through that silt and not cover more than, you know, 10, 20, 30 feet. We're gonna follow every and any possible lead when it comes to finding Susan or any missing person. This one just happened to be somebody, I mean, this literally fell in our laps like 48 hours ago. I'm very open-minded, but I think my optimism more than anything is kind of what keeps me pushing through all this and uh, not slowing down. And we're not disappointed, like I'm, I'm really not, like this is just for us, another check off the list. Pretty sure we're gonna wrap it up. If you do have any leads on Susan Powell or any other missing person, such as uh, Dylan Rounds, uh, who went missing out near uh, uh, Montello, Nevada, please 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 get a hold of us let us know info at heavydsparks.com is the email to send anything to huge shout out to uh law enforcement who's been involved in all these cases west valley city police on the susan powell investigation elko county sheriff's department stepped up big time to help the rounds family to help, Dil to help uh, find dylan uh just huge shout out to every law enforcement officer uh and agency who's serving and working hard to uh help protect us and, and find our missing loved ones with that said we're just going to keep looking.